the session that I'm going to be presenting here um, is called Creating Interactive Google Presentations, um, or I think I got a longer title than that. I think I had called it something like uh, Interactive Google Presentations for Quizzes and Stories. So once more, I'll give a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about here today, uh, then uh, do a couple more housekeeping items, and then boom, we'll get right into it. Uh, the idea behind what we're going to be talking about today is using Google Presentations, which is like PowerPoint. It's Google's uh, version of a multimedia slideshow. Uh, to create a slideshow that's not sequential. Normally, you have a slideshow, you click one slide, it takes you to the second, then the third, then the fourth. That's normal. That's what most slideshows are supposed to do. That's what you want them to do. But what if you didn't have to do it that way? What if you could go ahead and have slides if you clicked on a slide, not necessarily go to the next one. Maybe you could have multiple options. You could click on A, B, C, or D and branch off to different slides in there. Well, the great thing is you can do that. Google Presentations allows you to insert hyperlinks into a slide that then link to other slides in the presentation. Well, right away, this gives you some great ideas. This would be great for a quiz, like a review quiz, where students could see a question, they could click on the uh, answer they think is right, and it would take them to a slide to give them immediate feedback. You know, yes, that's correct, or no, it's not. Please go back and try again sort of thing. This would also be great for a choose-your-own-adventure story. If the kids were doing creative writing and you wanted them to write that type of a story, each slide could be a page of the story, and then they could click off of the options at the bottom to make this choice or make that choice and go to a different slide in there. So a great way to uh, create some interactivity in your Google presentations. And so uh, that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Hopefully that gives you a, a good idea uh, of, of what we're taking on. Uh, I do want to mention that everything I'm sharing with you today is available online. So if you are on the State of Tech PD website and you go to my session, if you scroll scroll down just below all the chat areas, you will see I have a link there for more resources, okay? And that means uh, there's a handout I've got, I've got uh, some sample uh, presentations, all that stuff is on the Apps User Group website, and that link will take you right to this page right here on creating interactive Google presentations. You'll see that I've made a uh, help guide that talks through everything I'm doing today. So even though I'm going to hopefully explain it very nice and clear for you, anything you miss, please visit this help guide. I'll go ahead and open it up so you can see it real quick and an idea of what I'm talking about there. Uh, the help guide um, is in PDF or in Google Docs format, so you can look at it either way, whatever, whatever works for you there. Uh, and it talks about everything I'm going to talk about, about proper naming conventions for your slides, inserting links, going to talk about things like avoiding unintended advancement when you're running an interactive slideshow, duplicating slides, lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff there. So that's a very helpful handout there. Plus there's a link to a quiz example. And that's what I'm going to start with today. I'm actually going to use this link and that's going to bring us right here. Uh, what I've done is I went ahead and I created a sample to show you kind of what my vision is for this, what, what I'm sort of thinking, how you could use this. Now, this is a really simple quiz, okay? So the one I'm showing you here is very basic. I think I've just put in like maybe three questions. Yeah, I've done like three questions. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a giant quiz. It's, it's, it's a real small one. But the idea is I wanted to be able to show you the general idea of what this could look like if you were to make an interactive slideshow with Google presentations, okay? Well, let me go ahead and run the slideshow. So I'm going to go view, and I'm going to choose start presentation. So if you're opening this up, that's perfectly fine. You just click view and start presentation. And here comes the presentation, and there it is. All right, so this is what the students would see if I were to create an interactive quiz with Google presentations. Now, I've thrown in some blah, blah, welcome stuff here about directions and so forth. And uh, basically, I'm saying this is designed to demonstrate how you could use interactive presentations. Now, I do have one um, little uh, uh, explanation here, and that is um, that it says for each slide, please click the available links on the slide. Um, do not click the navigation arrows at the bottom. That's the one thing you really can't turn off. <laughs> and so if you use the navigation arrows at the bottom, well, then you're going to go slide one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll go straight through. That's not going to help you any because then you're not taking advantage of the interactive thing. So I am encouraging you, please click on the links on the slides not on the navigation arrows. That way it'll take you where you want to go. Okay, so I'll pretend I'm a student and I come here and I go, oh, fantastic, here's our quiz. Let me click here to begin. 
and it takes me to the first question. What is the square root of 9? All right. So I went ahead and I put in four possible answers here, the correct one being 3, being the square root of 9. But I tried to pick some others that might maybe make a little sense, like if somebody for some reason you know, was thinking doubling or they were thinking of cutting in half or something, if they weren't sure about what the square root meant. And so if I come in here and I click on choice A, what it does is it jumps me out to a slide that is question one, answer A. Okay, so notice that's the title of it. It says, sorry, that's incorrect. And then I have a chance here to give them a little bit of feedback. Remember, the square root is a number of a, a square root of a number is a value that when multiplied by itself gives you that number. And then because I know they chose 18, that's how they got to this slide, I can now say 18 is two times nine, not the square root of nine. So I can address the specific question the specific answer they chose and explain to them why that wasn't the right one. Here, click click here to go back and try again, takes them right back to question one. Oh, well, maybe they try answer C. Okay, so question one, answer C, that shoots them out to that slide. Question one, answer C again, that's incorrect. Four and a half is half of nine, not the square root. Try again. Maybe they choose 81. Sorry, 81 is the square of nine, not the square root of nine. Go back and try again. Three Yes, that is correct. Three times three is nine. Now, obviously, you're going to tell right away. There's nothing about this that's grading the students. It's not like that at all. This is very different than using Google Forms and using Fluberoo, like we talked about in the last se uh, session that we did on, uh, on, on using Google Forms. That can actually collect their responses and grade them and so forth. That, that's not what's going to happen here. The students can just keep clicking until they find the right answer, but that's okay. This is meant to be a review. So we're creating an interactive presentation that's going to serve as a review for them. And maybe it's not even you creating this. Um, students absolutely could make these as well. You could say, okay, guys, we're dividing up stuff. Each of you, you know, have different units that you're going to make the review presentation for, and then you can use those year after year after year as it goes. Okay, go on to the next question. So question two, what type of rock forms when magma cools and hardens? Okay, well, we've got sedimentary, we've got metamorphic, and we've got igneous. Okay, so, you know, let's say I choose sedimentary, the first one, and it says, ah, sorry, that's incorrect, and now I have a, I have a, a teachable moment. Now, they may not read it, they may just click back, but if so, sedimentary rocks are formed from sand and shells and pebbles, and so I can tell them, no, 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 this is what sedimentary rocks are. Go back and let's try this again. Okay, so they go back and they go, well, maybe it's metamorphic. Oh, no, no, sorry, that's not it. Metamorphic is when they're formed by pressure under the Earth's surface with intense, intense heat and pressure. And here's a picture of some metamorphic rocks. Go back and try again. Okay, okay, maybe it's igneous. Yes, that is right. Igneous rocks, here's an example. It comes from when magma cools and hardens. Moving on to the next question. What country is highlighted in this map? And so we've got France, Germany, Spain, and Italy, and we want to figure out what country that is. Well, I mean, obviously, we've got France there, but we'll choose the other options. Like, I could pick Germany and say, nope, 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 this is what Germany looks like. Okay, go back and try again. Well, maybe it's Spain. No, 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 that, there's, there's Spain. That's what Spain looks like. Try again. Well, maybe it's Italy. Nope, nope, Italy is the boot one right there. Go back and try again. Okay, is it France? Yes, it is France. And then... You're done with the quiz. Go on to the end of the presentation, and this has a little thank you there with, again, a link to the page where I've got all of this information on and some other links there for you. So that is the quick example of what a quiz could look like. And if I go ahead and close or minimize that out of the way, you'll see this is the quiz itself that I used to create that. So you can see I've got my question one here, and then I've got question one, answer A, answer B, answer C, and answer D. And then I've got a slide after that for question two. And then I've got question two, answer A, question two, answer B, question two, answer C, question, oh, there were only three for that one, okay. And then question three with answer A, answer B, answer C, answer D, and then my final thing there. All right, so that gives you a kind of an overview of what it looks like. Now, we're going to get into the gory details. We're actually going to create one from scratch, and I'll take you through things that would be my suggestion, that if you're going to create one of these, lessons I have learned <laughs> to make it a little bit easier on you um, and to avoid possible pitfalls there. 
So hopefully that gives you a good uh, overview before we turn the corners. I'm going to pause for just a moment here, and I'm going to take a look at our chat window. I'm going to see if Paul has any questions, see if anybody's got any questions before we move over into um, our next uh, step of this, which is how to make one of these. So check in the chat window there and see if there's any questions. I don't see any at the moment. That's fine. All right. Very good. Well, if anybody has any questions, definitely throw them in the chat at any point in time, and uh, I'll be glad to address those. All right. Very good. And for those that are in the chat window, I'm going to, if you need to get to this uh, site, I'm going to throw that in there really quick. Um, get my apps user group site for you there. If you didn't see the link, there we go. There's the, there's the link to where we're getting all the stuff. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, guys. So, Let's go ahead and say we're going to create one of these guys. Oh, and by the way, I did start making one for a Choose Your Own Adventure story. I just didn't get it finished. Um, it's a little bigger <laughs> than, than I thought it was going to be. When, when I get that one finished, I will be putting that on uh, the website as well. I'm not actually writing the story when I was a teacher. I did this with my students, so I'm actually resurrecting <laughs> one of the old Choose Your Own Adventure stories that I had my students write. I know I taught math, but I also taught the uh, the uh, Gifted and Talented program, and so that was part of our of our Gifted and Talented program. They they did a, a unit on on creative writing, and so there will eventually <laughs> be another example up there that shows a Choose Your Own Adventure story. I just uh, it was a little it's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be, so I didn't get it done just yet. All right, well let's go ahead and create an interactive. Uh, presentation. We'll say we're going to do a quiz. We'll just we'll just stick with a quiz for the example here right now. So here we are. I'm in my Google Docs screen, and I'm going to go up to click on Create. Which Google Docs, by the way, guys, totally free. Just I know I'm probably speaking to the choir here, but uh, if if not, if you're not familiar with it, Google Docs, uh, absolutely free, no cost at all. You can just get a regular Gmail account, <clears throat> and you have full access to Google Docs. Better yet, if your school signs up for Google Apps for Education, which is totally free, no cost at all, you can then have Google uh, Docs, Google Calendar, Gmail for, for all your staff and students, which is what we do at our school district. So I'm in Google Docs. I'm going to go up to Create, and I am going to click on Presentation. So I can create a document, a presentation, a spreadsheet, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and click on Presentation. So here we go, bringing up my presentation creation screen. All right. Now, guys, we're going to go with a really basic theme. There's lots of themes you have here, but honestly, for what we're doing, it's best just to go with like simple light, to go with something really basic, because we're going to be making adjustments to it as we go. So you can pick a different theme if you want, but honestly, best probably just to start with simple light. So we're starting with simple light. And there we go. Now, if you've used PowerPoint, you're ready to go. I mean, you, you certainly know how how this works. You know, you've made slideshows before, very, very similar. Our first slide is just our title slide, so I'll come in here and I'll just say interactive quiz example for PD in PJs. All right, so there we go. Very, very simple. Uh, put my name in there. Excellent. We're ready to go. Okay. So now I've got my title slide. Again, it looks really boring and basic right now. I understand that, but we'll jazz it up as we go. So there's my, my simple title slide there. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and start creating my questions and my answers to make the interactive uh, presentation. Well, before I can make something interactive, I have to make the slides. I can't create a slide and link it to another slide if the other slide doesn't exist. So I do have to have a couple of slides created. So I'm going to go up to my new slide button here, and I'm going to create a slide that is title and body. And this will be my first question. So I'm just going to title this question one. And uh, I'm just going to use the one I used for my sample, if that's okay with you guys, about the different types of rocks. I'll just reuse that one. So I'm going to come in here, and I'll just paste in that. I've already got it. So what type of rock forms when magma cools and hardens? So we'll go with my example that I had earlier. Okay. So all I've done is I created a slide, put in the title, typed in, well, in this case, copied and pasted in my question text. Okay, so far so good. We're, we're doing good. The thing is, if I want sedimentary to now become a link that takes me out to another slide, I need a slide for sedimentary. So let's do that. Come up here, create a new slide with title and body, and let's name this one question one answer A. And you'll see in a minute why I'm naming them that way. Well, 
sedimentary is not the right answer, so that's going to be a sorry slide. So I'll come in and paste in, sorry, that's incorrect. Remember that sedimentary is blah, 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 blah. Click here to go back. Okay, guys, now I did the most basic, 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 simple stuff there because I just wanted to get enough in there to show you the mechanics. Then we're going to flesh it all out. So we've got a title slide, we've got a question one, and we've got an answer A to that. Okay, that's enough to go ahead and show you how this is going to work. So here we go. I want to take sedimentary, and I want to take that and make it a link. How do you do that? Well, basically, I highlight it. Just take my mouse, drag across it, and highlight it. And then I go up to the link button. In the top toolbar, you'll see it looks like a chain link. You can click on that. Or if you prefer menus, you can click insert and link. Either way, it works. And what it does is it opens up the edit link screen. Okay. Now, with edit link, you can link to a web address, an email address, or a slide, and that's exactly what we need to do. I need to be able to link to a specific slide. Now, when I choose link to slide, I get a couple of choices that really aren't going to be useful to me. Next slide, previous slide, first slide, last slide. I guess those could be used, but that's not what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be linking to specific slides because I don't want to worry about where they move. If they get rearranged, if I stick in another question, if I add another answer, I don't want to worry that next slide is no longer next slide, you know, I want to know it's the right one. So if I choose specific slide, it will give me all the slides in my presentation. Now, here is my first word of wisdom to you, okay? And if you're looking, if you're following along in the handout that I have linked in on the site, I cover all of this in there, but one of the first words of wisdom is naming your slides. And I really think it's very helpful to do it in a way that you can predict. Now, it doesn't matter how you name them as long as it makes sense to you. What I do if it's a quiz, is if it's a question, I just name the slide question one, question two, question three. If it's an answer slide, I name it question one, two, three, whatever, dash, answer, A, B, C, D, whatever. That way, with no question, I can tell I'm trying to link from question one, answer A, I should be going to the slide called question one, answer A. So very easy for me to say, okay, that's where that's supposed to go. So as quickly as that, I've now made a link that if somebody were to be running this live, I, I'm not running it live at the moment, I'm in edit mode, but if they were to run it live and if they clicked on sedimentary, it would shoot out to slide three here. It would actually jump them over to this slide, which is good. Okay. Now, I'll want to do the same thing for metamorphic and for igneous and so forth. However, before I get too deep in here, now it's time for the next word of wisdom in this process, okay? So, so far, so good. Here's the concern. If I were to run the slideshow right now um, and people were to, um, you know, start clicking on the links like it says here, that would be great if they followed the instructions and actually clicked on the link. But you may not know this. Did you know that in a regular Google presentation, if you click anywhere else on the slide, that's the same thing as move me forward one slide. Yikes, that would be a problem. So if I didn't want them, like if I had sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous all linked in here, and they accidentally just clicked, you know, up in the corner, or they clicked, you know, in this text up here, that moves you to the next slide, even if they don't mean it to. So we need to address what I call avoiding unintended advancement, okay? You don't want them to be able to accidentally move forward by clicking anything else on here. You need them to stay on that slide unless they click these very specific links. Now, I'm sorry to say there is no magic button <laughs> in here that says don't move forward when you click. Unfortunately, what we have to do is we have to trick it. We have to take everything that's on the screen and turn everything into a link that links back to the same slide. Now, it is a bit of setup, but if you do it right at the first time, then it's way, way easier. That's why I'm not creating all the slides. I'm going to do a lot of copying and pasting to make life easy for me. So let me show you how this works. Here's what you want to do. So for question one, I need to click on the title. Now, I'm not going to link the words question one. I'm going to link the entire text box for question one. So I'm not clicking in here and highlighting question one. I'm just clicking here so that I get this blue border around it. With that, I'm going to hit link to a slide, 
to a specific slide to itself. I'm linking slide question one to question one. So if somebody accidentally clicks on the title, it's going to take them right to the same slide they're on. They're not going to unintentionally advance on to the next slide. Same thing for this text box. Just click on the text box. Not, don't highlight stuff in it. Just click like on the edge of the text box. And I'm going to link that entire text box to a slide, a specific slide, the slide itself. OK. Now, if they accidentally click on any of the words in here or whatever, they're not going to zip off to the next slide. They will have to specifically click on these links, which I will continue to add in later. So I've protected this, and I've protected this. What have I not protected? I haven't protected the background yet. What if they click back here somewhere, not inside of there? That's a problem. We can't have them doing that. So piece of cake, easy to fix. What we're going to do is we're going to make a fake background. Okay? We're going to go to Insert, Shape, and we're going to choose a rectangle. And we're going to make a fake background that, again, links back to the same slide. So we're just trying to protect ourselves. Now, I know this sounds like a lot of work, guys, but do it once and you'll never have to do it again. We can just copy paste this. We will not have to keep doing this over and over and over and over again. So it does save you time. Okay? So I'm going to click rectangle and I'm going to draw a rectangle that's as big as the slide. And I'm going to let go of that. Now, it's covering it at the moment. Oh, don't worry. It's okay. That's fine. What we're going to do is a couple of things. First of all, let's change the color because gray is not going to be a very interesting background. So I'll make all of my questions be yellow. Okay? So it's a yellow background. Okay, very good. Then, with it highlighted, let's hit the link and let's link to a slide. Let's link to a specific slide and let's link to slide for question one. Let's link back to itself. So now it's protected. But now I can't see anything. No problem. Right click on it, go to order, and send it to back. That will put it behind everything else. And there we go. Now, no matter where they click, if they click the background, it's linking back to the same slide. If they click the title, it's linking back to the same slide. If they click this text box, it's linking back to the same slide. No matter where they click, it's going back to the same slide unless they click my specific links that I'll be putting in here. Okay? And that's what you do to protect it so people do not accidentally move on to something you don't want them to. Okay? Um, now, I already made this one, so unfortunately, I can't copy-paste this one. This one I do have to fix real quick because I made it as an example for you already. So real quick, I need to take my text box here, link it to answer A for question one. I need to take this text box, link it to the slide for question one, answer A. And I need to put a background in for this slide. So I need to insert a rectangle. And we'll draw a rectangle as big as the slide, and this is an incorrect answer. This one was incorrect, so I will make this uh, red, and I will link it to itself in case somebody accidentally clicks on the background, and I will go to order, and I will send it to the back. So basically, I just duplicated what I did on this slide here. So now both slides are protected. If somebody accidentally clicks the background or the title or this text area, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> they're going right back to the same slide they were at. At this point now, ah, I can just start doing some copy-paste if I want to now, so that's much better. Well, before I do a total top copy-paste, um, well, I guess it's okay. Um, I could go ahead and put this link in and save myself a little bit of time, but it'll be different for some of the different um, questions we do. So all I want to do now, guys, is go ahead, click here, and right-click on the slide and say that I want to duplicate it because I'm going to need some more of these answer slides. So question B needs an answer slide or answer B and answer C. So now I've duplicated these. So there's my question one. This will be answer A. This one, I'm going to turn into answer B. And this one, I'm going to turn into answer C. Now, here's the nice thing. I don't have to redo everything again. For question one, answer B, if somebody clicks the background, it still goes to itself, slide four. On slide five, if somebody accidentally clicks the title, no problem. It goes to slide five. It goes to itself. So you're not having to redo that over and over and over and over again. Okay. 
Well, so there's my question, and I've got sedimentary set up. It links out to this one. Then I need my next question, answer B. Now, answer B is metamorphic. So let me copy and paste my metamorphic text in. So let's come over here, and let's copy and paste in my metamorphic text. And sorry, that one was incorrect. And then answer C is for igneous. Now, igneous is right. That is the right one. So let me copy and paste that in. Whoops. Try copy and paste again there, Eric. There we go. Copy and paste that in. Now, because that's correct, I don't want it to be a red background. So I will click on that rectangle that's serving as the background, and I will refill that green. Very good. Hey, guys, it's coming together now. We've got our title slide. We've got our first question. We've got our three possible answers. Let's start linking things together. So now I come in and I grab metamorphic, and I say I want to make that be a link that goes to slide specific question one answer B. All right. And then igneous, that's going to be question one answer C. So let's go and link that to a slide. Let's go to a specific slide, question one, answer C, and there it is. So now I have all of my links to go out. I can very quickly put my links to go back. This was a wrong answer, so this one should link back to the question. So link this right back to question one so they can try again. Same thing here, wrong, oops, wrong answer. So grab that guy. I could do a copy and paste. That would have probably saved me a little time there. But I go back to question one. All right. Now, if I had another question, I could use this to go on to the next question. So that would certainly be fine. OK, so far, so good. So we've got our title slide. We've got our question. And we've got our three possible answers. Maybe, though, I want to liven this up a little bit. You saw in my example, I had pictures in there. Well, we can very easily put pictures in here, and we have to be careful. Those will need to be protected as well so people don't click on those, but very easy to do. So let's say I want to put in a picture of um, the igneous rock because that is the correct answer. If you're not familiar with Google presentations and putting in pictures, it's really easy to do. It's just back up on the insert menu, and then you just choose image. Now, there's lots of ways to put pictures in. You can upload a picture. You can take a snapshot from your webcam. You can put in a URL. You can use your Picasa web albums. You can go to your Google Drive. Or you can just search. So I'll just go in and search for igneous and see what it finds. And boom, there's a bunch of igneous rocks from a Google search. So I could pick one of these guys and select that and drop that into the slide. And give it a second. There it is. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Zoop. There we go. And there it is. All right. So now I've added a picture of an igneous rock in there, but I don't want it to be something they can click on accidentally. So I will have to click it and tell it to link back to question one slide just to be safe. <laughs> so that's protected too. And on and on. And we don't have to do this for every one of them. But, you know, exactly. If I needed, uh, this one is sedimentary. So I'll just copy and paste so I don't have to retype the whole thing. I could go insert image and type in sedimentary. And find a sedimentary rock. There we go. Select that guy. Drop him in. Now, I might need to move the text around. I think my sedimentary rock is a little big. So let me shrink him down a bit. Let me grab my text box, and I'll just push that over a bit, and I'll move him up. There we go. But link to a slide back to question one, answer A, because that's the slide I'm on, and I don't want somebody to accidentally click off of that. All right, guys. Well, let's run the slideshow and see if it works. Let's make sure I didn't make any terrible mistakes here. So, um, oh, and I could, I could make this more attractive if we want. We could make this background something that looks a little prettier. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and view, start presentation. And did it work? Let's see. Okay. So we go ahead and we click to get started. Question one. What type of rock forms when magma cools and hardens? Well, let's try to break it. Let's click on the background. Didn't go anywhere. Good. Let's click on the picture. Good. Let's click here. Let's up. Oh, oh, I did something wrong, obviously. 
Isn't that sad? What did I do wrong? I must have missed that one. Sorry about that, guys. I'll go back and fix that one. So I must have missed that one. But let's click on sedimentary. No, that is incorrect. Let's make sure sedimentary doesn't go anywhere. Good. Let's go back. Metamorphic. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, no, I must have missed another one. Uh, I missed a couple of them there. Sorry about that, guys. I'll have to do a better job with that. Go back and fix some of those. I must not have clicked on them properly. Let's go to igneous. And yes, that is correct. Now, I didn't put a link in there, but I would have to click on that. I'd have to make another slide for it to go on to the next one. So obviously, I did miss a few of those links in there. And I'll have to go back and see what I did wrong there. Looks like, um, oh, no, it says it's going to slide three. Uh, I'll have to double check. I must have clicked something in there wrong, so sorry about that. But that's the idea is you do your best. <laughs> you do your best to prevent them from clicking on things that you don't want them to click on and just clicking on the things that you do. That's, that's what our hope would be. Now, at this point, I could go to my next question, come back up to question one, duplicate that, drag it down below these, drop it, and turn this into question two now. So now this becomes question two, maybe get rid of my picture, maybe get rid of my text, and now type in my new question and start over again. So that's the idea. Now, this is an example using a quiz. It wouldn't have to be a quiz. It could be, like we said, a choose your own adventure story. I could come here to my first question, and instead of it being a question, it could be page one of the story. And so they could read some text, blah, 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 and then down below there would be the questions. Do you choose to do this? Or do you choose to do that? And then based upon how they click, it would send them off to different parts of the story. Now, you could even have the kids do the artwork. You know, kids could draw pictures. You could scan those in, put them in there. And all together, that could be a really neat one. All right. Now, I'm going to pause there for a moment because, again, I've been talking for a bit of a length of time there. And I want to make sure that I don't miss any questions people have had. So I'm going to pop over to the um, chat box. And it looks like. Um, Neat tricks for getting around the unintentional advancement. That's been put in there. Yes, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, there's, uh, you just kind of have to do that to keep it from moving ahead when you don't want it to. Um, what else do we have here? It's a shame that text boxes don't wrap around images. You are correct. <laughs> that is a shame. I really wish that when you threw an image in that the text box and the image were aware of each other and I could just wrap things around. You're right. I did have to move this over so that the text would get around that picture. So that is unfortunate. That would be nice if that could get updated at some point. However, Google Presentations just went through a major facelift at the end of last year, so I don't know how soon we'll see any more changes to presentations. I think the work is being put into some of the other things right now. So, um, all right, let me check again. Any other questions or comments, feel free to throw them in the chat box. I'm going to double check and make sure nobody accidentally put any questions in on my Google Plus page, because I know the video is showing up there as well. And I don't want to assume that maybe somebody accidentally put a question in there. No, I don't see any over there. So we're all in the right place. All right, guys. Well, uh, going to go ahead and start pulling this together then, wrap a few things up. Just as a reminder to you, be sure to come back to the State of Tech PD in your PJ's website, which is pd.thestateoftech.org. There you will find links to all of the resources from this presentation. This link takes you out to Apps User Group. And on the Apps User Group website, that's where you'll get a link to my handout on making interactive presentations. That's where you'll get <coughs> the quiz example I made. That's where I'll eventually link in um, the uh, other presentation I'm making, uh, the Choose Your Own Adventure one. But also, if you're just not familiar with Google Presentations, like, ah, you know, I just, I don't know Google Presentations that well, here's another link to just an overall general using Google Presentations uh, handout. And this takes you through all the basics of it. So I kind of assumed today that most people were sort of familiar with it, but this will give you all the information you need about Google Presentations in general.